Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today we have a very interesting topic and we're going to be talking along the line of diplomacy. So welcome uh, to those students at the Excel University and those of you that are joining us around this world. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I am going to share with you uh, my PowerPoint. So in that way, you will be able to uh, glean from what we are teaching today in regards to uh, the spirit of diplomacy in the local church. Absolutely necessary in the times, especially that we live in. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Pepe Ramnath. You can contact us by going to our website at pepiramnathintl.com. That is pepiramnathintl.com or uh, the telephone number that you're seeing on the screen, uh, which is 954-989-7300. You can contact us there. On the website, you will get information about books and materials, mentoring program in fact we started the mentoring the first mentoring program just about three weeks ago and uh, we are having an amazing time with students from all around this world so you want to uh, get into the next uh, mentoring program as quickly as you can and get some more information about that and also as time uh, uh, drags along <laughs> we are hoping that many nations will be reopened and so we'll see you in a nation next to you so again, thank you so much. And again, we are going to talk along the line of the spirit of diplomacy. Um, I'm going to enlarge my screen so in that way you will be able to see. And every so often, I will kind of get in and out of uh, the teaching. So uh, get your pen, get your paper ready. We're going to talk today about the spirit of diplomacy and the local church. Um, you know, I found this... Uh, fable uh it's an african proverb and fable actually it says the lion does not turn around when the small dogs bark that's why you have to pay close attention to uh, who you're listening to and what is distracting you because in these times that we live in you have to take and pay close attention to the voices that will enlarge you instead of the voices that will discredit and make you smaller all right hey there's a lot of information out there right now and information can actually be given out by anyone, anyone in any place, anywhere. It comes from television, radio, the news media. It comes from books and articles and so forth. And anyone can actually do so. But it takes effective diplomacy and communication to get it through to the audience that you are speaking to. Now, you know, John Maxwell made a statement that I, I wanted to quote for you. And uh, he said, many leaders give out information, but never connect with the people. You see, we need information that will connect with people. Information that you communicate from the heart rather than from just the tip of your head. In other words, you have to communicate information that will actually help people to believe you must first believe the materials in order for you to actually communicate the, the material and when you don't believe the material then you're only reading and when you read you it's very very difficult to connect and to communicate with people all right so uh we're going to talk a little bit about along that line today all right so let me enlarge this again one more time the church now has an awesome uh responsibility and the church has always been given the responsibility and has always been the original choice by God for administering and maintaining his will here on this earth. His will is the information that he wants us to communicate to a lost and dying world. Jesus came to the earth to actually build his church, his ecclesia, uh, with a promise to, to train and to reestablish the right gatekeepers. These gatekeepers really are ambassadors they are the ambassadors and they are placed at the very entrance of every influential system whether it's the educational system the sports system political economical social systems they are placed there and so these systems that controls or influences the systems of the world is where gatekeepers are trained and actually placed there i stressed on on that word train and that's exactly what we are trying to do at excel and what we are doing here at pepe ram at international we want to train you so when you stand at the gates you will be able to communicate 
the exact words of Jesus of Nazareth. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 says, And he said to them, Go ye into all of these systems, and into all of these worlds, and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. You have to look at that word. So this doesn't just only include humans. It includes every creature. So you have to go to the zoological, botanical, I mean, uh, the environmental, all of these systems and be able to preach it, be able to teach it. Preach and teach don't necessarily mean always talking. It means to adjust the systems. All right. And that's why we have a responsibility to go into the systems of this world and to readjust those systems. Very, very important. So sometimes we are sent to the environmental system or we are sent into the uh, ocean system or biological systems or political systems. And you don't always have to preach. You don't have to always shout out there. You can actually lead and lead the people or lead everything living and non-living to come back in alignment with what God has originally actually said. Amen. Amen. So, again, we have to pay close attention to those words. So in this particular session of mentoring, we will actually address the original diplomatic responsibility. And I stress that word diplomatic because a lot of people go into the world and they go haphazardly. And, and so they become very insultive to people and we are unable to win the world over to the Lord Jesus Christ. So this particular session is going to concentrate on the original diplomatic responsibilities as ambassadors at the local church level that are sent to the marketplace. We will learn simple, basic leadership etiquettes and skills to actually sharpen and enhance our influence and our ability to communicate, all right, and to lead our departments and our community. Now, Jesus was very clear on his mission. He was very, very clear. He didn't have no doubt of what he was sent to actually do here. He had instructions. He was trained in heaven. And so he came down to the earth to do exactly what he's trained to do. So Jesus was very clear on his mission. And he came to the earth to actually restore a few things. Number one, he came to restore the kingdom of heaven on the earth. That's why when he showed up in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, chapter 4 and verse 17, he says, the kingdom of heaven has actually arised. Hmm. It have arrived. The second thing is that in Isaiah, it tells you that when Jesus comes, he's going to come with the government on his shoulders. So the second thing he came to, uh, to restore was the government of heaven back on the earth. That is the way people are governed. That is now lost. We have all type of systems right now of government, but these systems are actually failing. We have democratic, we have socialistic, communistic, totalitarianism, feudalism, Nazism, all these systems we have seen, socialistic, uh, Systems have actually failed. What we are looking for now is a system that Jesus bought, a governmental system that he bought, which was the kingdom. Number three is to fulfill and to reestablish the laws of heaven once again on the earth. So, you know, Jesus made a statement. He said, listen, man, I did not come to destroy the law like many people actually would say. I did not come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. I came to show you how it should be done. There are some things that was in the law that was now incomplete. I have to now make the completion. I have to do the rollover of the, the law. So I came here to enforce the law. I came here to fulfill the law. I came to make the laws tangible. And so that's exactly what the Lord has actually come to do. And we have to pay close attention to that because he did not come to destroy the law. We were not given grace, really, to destroy the law because grace is a law. So we need grace, really, to fulfill the law because grace is a law. Remember, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not even one dot of my word will ever pass away. Number three is that he came to restore values. These are principles that help to decide what is right and what is wrong. So Jesus will make a statement like this. You have heard that it was said this way, but I say now unto you. He came now to establish these values. To show us what is right and what is wrong through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and how to act in various situations here on this earth, so that heaven may repeat itself again one more time. Here is another reason Jesus came. Uh, he came to bring back the colony of heaven on the earth. The colony of heaven on this earth. Number, I, I can't remember what number we are on right now, but he came also to restore society, social structures or fellowship of heaven back on the earth. He wants that communication that was established between God, uh, Adam and Eve, that was lost. He has come now to 
restore that social structure, communication, hanging out, you know, how we do things culturally. Then he came to restore the culture. In other words, the things, this is how we do things in heaven. We open the blind eyes. We make the lame walk. We bring peace to systems, governmental system, economical, social systems. We bring peace to that. So he came to establish the culture, he understood, the way of life, especially general customs and beliefs of a particular group of people at a particular time. He came to restore what again? The commonwealth of heaven. The monies are now kept, not, not kept only on one side of the uh, country or coin. It is distributed to, his, to the people accordingly. All right? So this is where God really came to restore the humanity of man so that we can have compassion one for another. Here are some um, ambassadors' uh, leadership skills. Number one is accountability. If you want to in, encourage leadership skills within yourself, the first thing you have to do is to be accountable. You have to be accountable. All ambassadors are accountable to their local embassy. Just like you are an ambassador of Christ, you are also accountable to your local embassy, which is called the church, the house of God. Amen. Number two, you learn how to listen. Listen, learn to listen to people. Don't always be the one that's always talking and over talking people. Wait till they complete their sentences. I myself, I'm guilty of that. I'm learning those communication skills myself. But it's so important that we listen to people before we respond. We listen to them. Number three is communication. Again, the way we say things, you know, we, we don't say things that will cause people to be offended. We say things that will actually draw people to us. So we have to work on our communication styles, the way we say things. All right. Number four is we lead by action and example. In other words, we maintain our integrity. We must be consistent with our word. We don't tell people that we are going to be at six o'clock in your place and show up at six o'clock p.m. instead of six o'clock a.m. We must be consistent with our word. If we said that we are going to hand in an assignment or be at a place at a particular time, we must be there. We must be consistent with our word because we set the example by our actions. Number five, really get to know people. Don't just try to gather a crowd. Be on a one-to-one -one basis. You know, we have a mentoring program at PRI, Peppermint International, and I refuse to have hundreds of students in this particular program. Why? Because I really want to know the students, the mentees, the people that are in this program. So I have a one-to-one -one basis. I meet on them on a one-to-one -one basis every month. I meet with them with the, the small group that we have, and then we have assignments that we go out, we go over together. So we are really getting to know people. If there's one thing that separates an average leader from a great one is the ability of the latter to build meaningful relationship with their colleagues and their followers. Number six is to commit to being better. Commit yourself to being better. So to build a diplomatic culture now at your church or your business or your government or whatever department you might be, there's a couple of things again that I'm going to go over. You want to be, you want to establish accountability. This is how this culture is established. Each leader must be accountable to their department and their church or their businesses or their local constituency. Number two is consistency. You must be consistent. Complete what you started. There's so many people that drop out. When things get tough, when things get boring, they say, oh, you know, this relationship is too boring. They skip from one relationship to another relationship, from one church to another church, from one business to another business, one country to another country because they are inconsistent. But tell you what, though, that same place that is boring will actually become exciting if you put your hand to the plow and you decide to stay. Amen. So complete what you started. Be friendly at all times, not only when you are feeling good, but do it also when you feel bad, when you don't even feel like it. Like the apostle said, the apostle Paul said, in season and out of season. Amen. Number three is setting the pace. Get the ball rolling and keep it rolling. Number four, setting the example. Be honest to the standards of operation that you have set for your life. Number five, become a leader of prayer. Don't do anything outside of prayer. You can't tell me that you're a leader in your church, but you never come out to corporate prayer. You do your personal prayer, but you don't come to for corporate prayer. Corporate prayer is absolutely necessary. And it shows your leadership because it shows that you are in constant contact with the home country, which is the kingdom of heaven. And the other people sees that and they say, wait a second, this man, this woman is in constant contact with the home country. Number six, become a leader of worship. We must worship the Lord thy God. Amen. Areas of concentration in this particular course that we're going to do today is adequate class, conflict resolution, diversity, budgets, and leadership.
Now, the question is, what is an ambassador? An ambassador is an, is an accredited diplomat sent by a particular country. As you know, we are sent by the kingdom of heaven. Amen. As its official representative to a foreign country. This foreign country is called the earth. And there may be countries that are on this earth that you are sent to. Stay in that country that you're sent to. Amen. Biblical constitution now states that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20, it now tells you who you really are. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading. He's actually speaking through us to the people that we are sent to. We implore you on Christ's behalf. This is what we are, we are there for. Be now reconciled with the home country, with your father and your God. That's our main, main objective, our mission here on this earth. And now this cannot be a part-time job. This is definitely a full-time job and it cannot be done in your spare time. Now, each ambassador has to always remember the regulations and the laws and the legislation of the country that they were sent from so that they will be able to help to conform and change those systems into the systems that they came from. The systems of heaven, you are to change and to transform that those particular era with your constituents. It's, that's what That's your Bible. All right. You cannot use a problem really to fix a problem. That means you cannot use the problems of the earth to fix the problem that is on the earth. Don't become a problem. And that is absolutely key and absolutely necessary. Amen. Okay. Now, I'm going to read for you also in, in Romans, uh, uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, now when you are in this world, <laughs> you're in the system, don't be conformed to it. Don't be conformed to the world. That means don't take on their attributes, their attitudes, their characteristics, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable onto the country that you are actually sent to. Amen. Amen. This is absolutely, absolutely important. So <clears throat> let me move to the, to the next slide here. So while you're in the country, you must continuously be in contact with the home country and you do that with the constitution. So you are cons constantly now being transformed. In, and if you're transformed by your con home country, then you cannot be conformed by the country that you're sent to. It's very, very tempting at times to actually conform to the things that are of the world. Now, the question here is, are we conforming to the systems of the world or are we making it, to, making it look more like heaven? Because we are sent to actually make it look more like heaven. Amen. I want you to see these things. Again, here's a question. Are we conforming to the systems of the world or are we making it look more like heaven? Because we are sent to the earth to make the earth look just, just like heaven. The condition of our world and the condition of society is directly now proportional to the effectiveness or the ineffectiveness of your responsibility on the earth. The, the effectiveness and the ineffectiveness of the church. So we can't blame anybody else. The condition of our world right now is directly proportional to how well we've been doing to change this entire world. And the question is, how well have we been doing? We have a greater responsibility as the church uh, more than you and I could actually think. You know, this young man, I love to talk about him, Chick-fil-A, is a principled company. He came into the world and he decided that I am not going to conform to what they say that a business has to be successful. And how a business can be successful. He sent a clear message with an intentional di diplomacy from, the, uh, from an ambassador of heaven to the earth. He as an ambassador uh, representing here on this earth. So he founded Chick-fil-A in, uh, in May of 1946. And it has moved, it has actually had more than 1,950 restaurants, mainly in the southeastern part of the United States. And the company's culture is influenced by its founder, Truett Cathy, a Southern Baptist man, because of Baptist, because of Truett, biblical Baptist belief, all Chick-fil-A restaurants are closed for business on Sunday, as well as Thanksgiving and on Christmas. Hmm. You know, uh, they said at Wall Street that he will never actually make it. Because in order for you to succeed in business, most people are home and available to come to you, buy in your business on Saturday and Sunday. And he says, no, I'm going to do what God says. Guess what? He is very successful, makes way more money than a lot of those other companies that are open on Saturdays and Sundays. 
I wonder what would happen if we made this same diplomatic stand. You and I know I'm talking about in all of the systems of the world that we are sent to, business system, sports system. How about if we made a stand to the NFL and we say we are not going to be doing anything on Saturday and Sunday. Sunday is my day for the Lord and Saturday is my day for rest. I am only going to play football on Monday to Friday. What would actually happen? Well, maybe they may try to kick you out of the team. But eventually, if everybody that are believers who are good football players begin to say that on Saturday I rest and on Sunday I go to church, then the NFL will be forced to actually change their policies. So we are, within that way, we are now changing the systems of this world to reflect the system of the kingdom of heaven. So now heaven now is made more visible in the NFL. We are sent to change the world, not for the world to actually change us. And we need to know this. Amen. The systems of this world does not quite understand the power of Sunday. So we have to kind of make it more plausible to them, explain to them. Nor do they understand the power of the Sabbath day. These days are considered religious days to them. They were trained in their mind to consider these days, Saturday and Sunday, to be religious days. Amen. But we can actually explain to them the medical benefit or to explain to them that these days are medically prescribed days by heaven to help humans on this earth so that their assignment would not be hindered by sickness and by diseases. Hey, you know, more sickness and more diseases are actually uh, made uh, uh, because of violation of God's word. Amen. I am trying to change my uh, slide here, but it just would not change. Wow. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so I think it changed right now because I want to come back and I want to talk to you in the face. All right. Now, this is why we need to learn why God said to rest on the Sabbath. Just don't say God said to rest on the Sabbath day and don't do anything about it after that. We just need to know why did he say that, all right? This may be part of the reasons why many diseases are actually upon man. Now, according to a 12-year-old study, uh, um, people that were attending church live longer than those that don't attend church. They have better health and they are, they are less premature death from people who died, uh, people who actually attend uh, church. We are commanded to assemble ourselves together. We need to find out why did the Lord say assemble for sake, not the assembling of the Lord. Well, in the study, it says that uh, it says that the interleukin six reduction is rewarded. That our bodies, that our bodies actually enjoy while we are sitting in the church itself. There's some research that shows that regular church goers, so people who attended church regularly, live longer than those who does not attend church at all. And so we have to be careful with even cyber church. I know right now we have no choice, but we have to, you know, now attend church a lot of time because of the COVID and the, the coronavirus. We have, may have to stay home. And do so, but as soon as we have the ability to go to church, we should be able to do so because it is absolutely detrimental to our health. Regular church attendance was associated with lower levels of interleukin six, a chemical that can cause in uh, arterial damages at elevated level and is linked to age-related diseases, Alzheimer and dementia, and so forth. The research also found that going to church boosted an elderly person's immune system. Imagine, you know, the coronavirus was actually affecting people that are much more older. But now they're saying if you actually attend church, your immune system goes up more and you can actually conquer this virus itself, you know. And uh, you can unclog arteries and you can actually reduce high blood pressure. Robert Wallace, a co-author, uh, of the report itself added that doctors even are now contemplating and some of them have actually prescribed a course of church attendance to benefit their patients. Listen, ambassadors, we must represent our home country while working and living in the country uh, that we have been appointed to be a part of. Amen. 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 All right. Now, in other words, we have to make Sunday special. We must make Sunday special. I am going to actually make this larger so that you could see it. All right. We need to make Sunday special. And this is where accountability comes in again. One more time. All right. All right. So let me do this again one more time here. Here it is. You make Sunday special. All right. Now, for U.S. ambassadors, uh, government experience and a familiarity with their home country is absolutely necessary. They must know policies. 
we must know the policies, which is the Bible. And a, an ambassador must also have the ability to adapt to other countries. That is where diplomacy comes in without losing the substances of their original country. Absolutely crucial to bringing back interests of a person from another country to your country. This is where we have to also understand diplomatic leadership. So diplomatic leadership involves negotiation, representing interests and policies, speaking publicly and resolving conflict with your co-workers, your neighbors and your families or your constituents. You must now, in other words, be a friend to sinners. You cannot despise the, the, the sinners. Jesus' example was he was a friend to the sinners. What do we do? Do we make a sinner feel more like a sinner? Or do we become friend with them so that we can, we can bring them into the gospel of the kingdom? Amen? So diplomacy. What is diplomacy? Diplomacy is the professional activities or skills of managing international relations the nation of heaven to the nations of earth. And this usually involves dealing with others without causing bad feelings. So we live our lives on levels, different levels, but we arrive in stages. And as we move from one level to another, the closeness of people and relationship in life will soon uh, uh, make changes in time. The people that you start off with may not be necessarily the one that you will actually finish with. Wow. Sometimes this is sad, but it's absolutely necessary. In other words, you have to leave people and relationships that are not going in the same direction with the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God. And this is a diplomatic act because there are some relationship that will be totally unhealthy for you. You have to know those things and you have to diplomatically, politely bow out of some of those relationships and then recollect later on, you know, uh, with them, reconnect with them. You know, in, in time to come. Now, if you stay in some of these relationships, you can actually jeopardize your relationship with God and you can actually compromise and deprive yourself in you moving forward and in the progress that the Lord has placed you to have on the earth. And you can actually be uh, an hindrance to the growth of the kingdom here on the earth. We are responsible, in other words, for the pearl of the kingdom. Whatever God has given to us, we must protect that first. That's the constituency. That is uh, that is the policies. Amen? Mark chapter 1 and verse 8 says, and straightway they forsook their nets. You see? Now here we are seen in the scripture, the disciples, they realize that uh, their relationship will be jeopardized or their relationship were jeopardizing their relationship with God. So the, the Bible says in Mark chapter 1 and verse eight, 18, it says, and straightway they forsook their nets and they followed Jesus. And sometimes you're going to have to forsake some relationship, some businesses and some acquaintances so that you may follow the Lord. Could you imagine what their friends, the disciple friend must have, must have said when they left them to follow Jesus of Nazareth. Mark chapter 10 and verse 20 says, and then Peter spoke up, we have left everything to follow you. Amen. Governments have always been God's national plans and within his policies. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse uh, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6, I want you to see these governmental policies. Amen. And uh, I'm going to enlarge again one more time so you can see these policies. It says in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6, this is way back in the Old Testament telling us thousands of years ago what God's original intentions were. And you shall be to me, he says, a kingdom of priests. This is royal priesthood. And a holy nation. He was always looking forward to building a nation, heaven on earth. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. A kingdom, he wanted, a kingdom, a country, a nation that is full of priests. Who are kings, priests and kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 tells us that he has washed us uh, in the blood of a lamb and has made us unto our God, kings and priests. And now as kings and priests, we shall reign on earth forever. Reigning is contingent on our kingship and our priesthood. Now, what is a diplomatic center? Very, very important. A diplomatic center is really like a museum. People come in there to see artifacts. 
They came in there, they come in there to educate themselves. It's an educational center that is totally dedicated to showcasing the history. That's from Genesis to Revelation, you know, Genesis to Revelation. That's the history, the practices and the challenges of the kingdom of heaven in another country. So we have to be able now in the diplomatic center, which is your the house of God, where the church gather, you must have all of the artifacts, all of the history that are there. When people walk in, into those meetings, they will actually see the histories of our church. They will see past uh, failures and successes. They will see how to do things. Now, the church itself is very, very important. The church is the gate. The house of God is the gate that the kingdom of heaven uses to transfer God's thoughts. So the church is very important. God transfers his thought at the gate. And so he speaks his thoughts to the world system on the earth through those gates and using his church. Genesis chapter 28 and verse 17 says, And he was afraid, this was Jacob, and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Bethel equals church and the gate of heaven. Or Bethel actually equals the house of God where the church uh, meets. Amen. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 says, And I say also unto you, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should never prevail against it. So the structure is exactly what you see right now on your screen. The kingdom of heaven this uh, releases this information to the church, which is the gate that meets at the house of God. And from the house of God where the church is, the church is now distributed into the marketplace. Amen. So in other words, you're not distributed directly from the kingdom of heaven to the marketplace. You're distributed from the kingdom of heaven to the house of God where the church is. And then you go to the gate of the family, media, art, government, religion, science, education, sports, businesses, and so forth and so forth and so forth. So now what is diplomacy? It is the art or the practice of conducting international relations. Why am I stressing international relations? Because you are from a foreign country. You are from the country of heaven. And when you are, you are disp when you are releasing or dispersing uh, information from this foreign country, it's called evangelism. For the purpose now, your evangelism really is for the purpose of negotiating alliances, treaties, and agreements between heaven and the worlds that you are sent to, the systems that you are in. Number two is tact, tact and skill. You must be tactful. You must be skillful in dealing with people. You don't deal with everybody the same way. You don't go to meet a president of a country with short pants you know or i don't know what else you might you would most likely put on a jacket a tie and the woman will dress with you know proper apparel number three is diplomacy is the ability to say and to do the right thing at the right time you must be very discerning when to speak how to speak and where to speak very very important now being present is 80 percent of the diplomatic tasks being present in the embassy being present in the house of God. You cannot be absent from the headquarters, which is the church, the house of God, and be an ambassador of, of heaven on earth unless you are accountable, of course. Amen. Diplomacy is the established method of influencing the decisions and the behavior of foreign governments and people through dialogue, negotiation, and other measures short of war and violence. You know, Unfortunately for us, the ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven has not yet captured this. But ambassadors from different countries, whether it's Trinidad, Tobago, the United States, Canada, or Holland, or, what, or Guyana, wherever that might be, whatever country might be watching from, they are in constant contact with their embassies. They visit their embassies, they go to the embassies, they are, they are in constant contact with their embassies. Unfortunately, the embassy of the, the church which is the house of God, many has actually forsaken the assembling together. And that leads to great, great, great disasters. So we have to be very, very careful and make sure that we have established the accountability uh, to the embassy here on this earth. So you can see how both of them, you know, correlate. Now, watch this carefully. It talks about having, you know, when we talk about earlier, the ability to say and to do, do the right things, to say things, having tact. Look at this carefully. When two porcupines get together, two countries that are at war, two organizations at war, you know, two people at war, you can use this example of the porcupines. When the, when the porcupine is about to mate, 
you know, they have a lot of those quills and those brittle. If those things get inside of you, it can stab you. It can hurt you really bad. So what does the porcupine do? The porcupine touches the area of another porcupine where there are no quills. That is in their hands and in their stomach area. And they begin to do a little dance together. They begin now to kind of, you know, have fellowship with one another. And when this happens, the quills on both of them begin to go down. The quills never go down until they begin to first touch in areas where there are no barbs, where there are no, no none of these uh, ferocious pins. Amen? And then when it goes down, because of the nice things that you've been saying about one another, they begin to hug and to get close with one another. We can... Follow so much from creation, like Job says. Ask the animals and they will tell you. Now, who is the audience to the United States, D.C.? All right. The U.S. D.C. is actually designed for visitors to come to the nation's capital. An important goal, again, they're coming back to the house of God. You're coming back to the embassy, a place now where you can actually learn about this particular country. An important goal of this particular center, this embassy, this house of God, is to reach on tap audiences, on church people, to and to broaden understandings to the American diplomacy or kingdom diplomacy. Amen. Visitors will learn now how diplomacy affects them every day. The U.S. D.C.'s proximity to the National Mall will make it easy for the tourists now to include a visitor to the center. So you have to be strategic where you build the church, where you build the house of God. We must live closer to the church, not our jobs or synagogue. So this is what we are saying. People have to now, uh, you, they, they have to have access to this, this, this embassy, this diplomatic center. So you don't live far away from it. And you have to build it in places that is accessible to the people as well. But the people also have to build their homes closer to where they can have access to this diplomatic center. Government is absolutely necessary for the existence and for the preservation of any civil society. That's why we have to be very careful of anyone that may be promoting anarchy or autonomous type society. You don't want to get in those kind of uh, type of society, a, a society or a government that, that has autonomy. You must represent now the government of our home country as ambassadors. You must dress well, smell well, look well. We're going to kind of cover all those as well. Diplomacy will convince nations to subscribe to our country's policies. Let me say this again one more time. If you're diplomatic in the way you care about yourself, the way you talk, you or you do the dance of the porcupine to bring down the quills, diplomacy itself now will convince nations and people in your community, in your villages and in your town to subscribe to the country's policies, which is your Bible. They would want to know a little bit more about the Bible. Jesus identified himself with David's government because David had the right prototype. He had the right model government structure that was needed to serve the people. The right government structure is always a government structure that are ready to serve the people. Amen. Very, very important. They are always ready to serve the people. If you have a system, a governmental system that is not there to serve the people, we have to be careful of that. The kingdom government is always there about people. David was now both a king, head of state, and a priest. He was also a worshiper. So you don't want to put people into political office or any type of influence that has no connection with the house of God. Amen. I, I pray that you, you that, that you will really get this. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 7 says, Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he, he will reign in David's throne forever. Now here are some diplomatic skills. And I, I'm going to increase this in the screen so that you may understand and you may be able to take notes or you could always stop this video and take notes of these particular diplomatic skills. Amen. Here are some of the diplomatic skills and here are some of the tips actually that you, you, you can have. All right. Always maintain good hygiene. Number one, always maintain good hygiene. You must be, you know, shower regularly, you know, keep fresh bread and mint in, in the mouth and so forth. Uh, number two, keep a fresh breath when meeting people uh, you will have conversation with. Number three, dress appropriately, modestly, so you could have people looking at your face than looking at any other part of your body. Be on time for your meetings. Be there sometimes before the meeting actually starts. Your promptness or your tardiness will teach people how to treat you. So if they see that you are always late and you're always tardy, guess what? The next time they're going to be coming late. Number five is social media. Social media was designed to communicate first the gospel of the kingdom, then to connect with friends. So it gives you the framework of mind, your thinking, when you go on social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, 
whatever you have out there, link and so forth. If your mind is that I am here first to communicate the gospel of the kingdom, your language begin to change. Your mannerism, the things that you communicate, the type of pictures that you put on social media will now reflect the things of the kingdom. And so you will be reflecting diplomacy even while you are on social media. You begin to like ideas on Facebook that does not always have to be about you. You know, again, we were saying earlier that a, the difference between this an effective and, or an ineffective leader is their ability to connect with people. So when you like what people are saying, uh, of course, things, of course, that are diplomatic, then they begin to pay attention to you. Post and share other people's thoughts regularly and you will make more friends that particular way. Amen. You cannot be a king in the marketplace until you are a priest in the house of God. We must notice. You can see in this picture the school teacher out there uh, that is teaching the student must also be a part of the house of God to keep the morals, the values, and the ethics of the kingdom always in their lives so they can convey it into the classroom. This is why I happen to believe that Dr. Martin Luther King was really a king in the marketplace, but a priest in the house of God. He has never given up his responsibility in the house of God. He kept preaching in the house of God, but went into the marketplace to to uh, uh, challenge policies and to change it and to uh, uh, legislate new ideas for freedom for people in the country and the nation. The effectiveness and success of a school teacher is calculated by his or her participation really in the house of God. This is according to the constitution of the kingdom. Here is something you need to know about diplomatic grace. God's grace in the market's place only come to us when we boast about the church, when we boast about our pastors, when we boast about leadership and our church family, when we boast about the house of God. God's grace comes to us diplomatically when we do that. Amen. So we must support the church with first fruits. We must support the church with tidings and offering so that the grace of God will go with you even into the marketplace that you are sent to change. You know, Hear what the scripture says here. For a day, this is in Psalms 84 and verse 10, David now, who is the head of state, the president, the prime minister of his country, the king, he says, for a day in your courts, he's talking about the house of God, is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than do, to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Wow. It tells you how important this is. The systems of the kingdom a, the systems of the kingdom is actually the missing link in our political, social, and economic worldly system. We need to bring the kingdom back again into the system so that the system will now work properly without malfunction so that we can minister to people and govern people accordingly. All ambassadors are charged or is responsible for bringing this missing piece of puzzle back into the work into this world and into the system that we are actually sent to. Hmm. So let us go into the world from the diplomatic centers, that's your ministries, that is the house of God, the church that you attend, and go into the system of the world with diplomacy or in dip diplomacy, just like yeast and just like Jesus, who is Lord over all of the worlds and all of the nation until the world becomes just like his kingdom. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 sums it up. He says, Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world, that's the systems of this world. Back in that time, that was the vocabulary that they used. The systems of this world. The economic, social, political system, educational system, sports systems of the world have now become the kingdoms of the Lord and of our Christ, and he now shall reign forever and forever and forever. Amen. Stand with your church always, for it is the protection of your communities and our communities. Our communities will be protected when we stand with our churches. One of the ways to stop the voices or influence of a country within a country is to silence or to weaken or to destroy the embassy. That's why so many people attack embassies because they want to weaken the country that that embassy is representing. And that's what people do 
when they attack the church, when you attack the embassy of God on the earth, which is the house of God where the church meet, then now you begin to silence the voice of the home country of the kingdom of heaven in that community or in that particular nation. So we need now to say good things. Amen. We need to say good things about the house of God. So the local church, the embassy, is where priests are trained to be kings and to be uh, to be uh, kings and priests out there. This is some of Dr. Richard Pinder's uh, information that you can actually subscribe to and buy up his books on embassies and so forth. Amen. 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 Uh, I pray that you have learned something today because I, I do want you to contact our church. Uh, there's a lot of materials out there. Angela has written a book called Arise Esther, and you can order those books, uh, you know, by going to the uh, website that you see down below. There's a book that I've written that will help you furthermore in diplomacy, and Angela's book definitely, because Esther knew how to go before the king, and she knew how to diplomatically entice the king to change his mind in what he was going to do to destroy the entire Jewish nation. There's a book called The Genetics of Vision. Make your vision very clear and plain so that when you stand before the people, you will be able to communicate the gospel of the kingdom. This is, of course, the book in its new cover here at this time, uh, Arise Esther, Becoming Woman of the Kingdom, Communicating the Gospel of the Kingdom uh, out there. There's another book that I have um, somewhere out here. I do also want to recommend um, another book um, here that uh, is called by a good friend of us, Victoria. Suba, and she wrote a book called Kingdom Living and the Home Embassy. It's a very, very good book for you to get. I, I was looking for my um, Rediscovering Eden book. Oh, here it is. <laughs> it was right here. And this book tells you how to create environments, whether you are in the embassy of the United States or you are the embassy of your village, your town, or your city. Uh, this book teaches you how to create environments that will epigenetically begin to influence the people that you're speaking to. So again, you can get all these materials by uh, going into our website, www.pepiramnathinternational.com, and you can order your, uh, your information out there. Hey, thank you so much again for being a part of uh, this broadcast today, wherever you're watching. Thank you so much. If you're ever in our city, I want you to come and visit our church. The So the first thing God gave Adam was let them have kingdom on the earth. Everything is going to flow from it. Todo va a fluir. As soon as the high priest blew the shofar in the temple, Thank you,